G'day guys, in this video I've got a fairly abstract probability puzzle for you. We've been asked, if the probability of an event is 1 on n, what is the probability the event will occur at least once in n attempts? And the second follow-up question for those who really want to challenge themselves is, what happens as n approaches infinity? Okay, I think this is a pretty interesting probability puzzle, so pause it and have a shot and then come back when you're done. Okay, well in order to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a variable capital X, which I will define as the number, number of times the event occurs, the event occurs in N attempts. Right, I'm going to define capital X as being this variable, okay? Now, what we've been asked to solve for in this first part of the puzzle is we've been asked to find the probability that the event occurs at least once, or the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. And hopefully you should be able to tell this is going to be 100% minus the probability that it doesn't occur at all in n attempts. Right? So the probability that the event occurs at least once is equal to 100% minus the probability that it doesn't occur n times in a row. Okay, and we can write this as 1 minus the probability that it doesn't occur in each individual event, which is going to be 1 minus 1 on n, right, to the power of n, right? We want to solve for it not occurring n times in a row, okay? And we can now write this as 1 minus um, n minus 1 on n, if we like, to the power of n. And that's going to be the probability that it occurs at least once, okay? So that's the answer to the first part of our probability puzzle. Now, what I found really interesting was trying to evaluate this thing as n approaches infinity. And this is the more interesting part of the puzzle, I think, okay? So the first thing you might realize is, well, hold on, as n approaches infinity, this term looks kind of familiar, right? You might be thinking this term kind of looks like the numerical constant e, right? Because some of you might be recognizing that um, e, the numerical constant e is defined as the limit as, um, I'll just do it as x approaches infinity, of 1 plus 1 on x to the power of x, right? That's what e is defined as, right? But this is a minus, not a plus. So we need to kind of like rearrange this beast to try and figure out what this is equal to. So this becomes a little bit of a algebraic, you know, game, okay? So let, let's, let's have fun with it. Let's define another variable m as being n minus 1. Okay, you'll see why I'm doing this shortly. This will be 1 minus m over, um, let's see, n is going to be equal to m plus 1, m plus 1, all to the power of m plus 1, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, in, in, this, in this little bracket here, I'm going to take this as 1 divided by the reciprocal of this. Seems like a really counterintuitive thing to do, but trust me, you'll see why I'm doing this in a sec. This is going to be 1 over m plus 1 divided by m like that, okay, all to the power of m plus 1, right? You'll see why I'm doing this in a sec. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, and this will be equal to 1 minus, uh, let's see, uh, we, can, we can break this denominator up, and we can write this as 1 over 1 plus 1 on m to the power of m plus 1, but instead of writing it as m plus 1, I'm just going to times it by 1 over 1 plus 1 on m. I just broke the exponent into 2, right? I'll even write a 1 there to make it clear, right? Now, the beautiful thing about this is this denominator, hopefully you can tell, is, is actually turning into our definition of our numerical constant e, right? Because, and I, I might even write a separate line here, we can write this as 1 minus 1 over, right? Because 1 to the power of m is just 1, 1 over 1 plus 1 on m to the power of m, right? times by, and I'll just leave this guy the way it is, 1 over 1 plus 1 on m, like this, to the power of 1. Now, if we evaluate this as n approaches infinity, which is the same thing as m approaches infinity, right, what happens is this denominator will approach e, right, and this term right here will approach 1 over 1 plus 0, which is just 1. So that means the limit as n approaches infinity of the probability the event occurs at least once is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 on e times by 1. Or if we like, the limit as n approaches infinity of this 
is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 on E, which is approximately 0 0.632, right? And that's, when I, when I did this puzzle just the other day, I found this so, I was so awestruck by it because I, I found it amazing that the, the numerical constant E can come out of a seemingly irrelevant probability puzzle. Right, so I was so awestruck by this video, I had to show this with you guys. I found it fascinating, right? So anyway, I, I, I hope you learned something from this and I hope you're kind of inspired by probability and how the numerical constant E can just come up out of nowhere. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed that, guys. Just so you know, I also do some videos in engineering dynamics, vibrations, and statics. So check them out on my website if you like. Cheers.